Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that was weak. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Um, we have a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, we'll start off with um, our sympathy going out to the PJ Smith family. They're from Marion. Um, he passed away. Young fellow. So pray for them. They've been having a bad week. Um, Father's Day, donuts with dad. So go downstairs, have a donut with your dad or someone else's dad. Brownie is serving, so they'll be delicious. <laughs> um, lots of things happening next month. Well, actually, uh, next week we should start with, there's no services here or borough. We have ecumenical services as a part of Laura Days, so we'll go over and support the Laura Days crew. Then next month, we have two joint services with Borough. We will be meeting in Borough for both of those services. They're very graciously allowing us to use their air conditioning for this potential for heat in July. It's quite high. We will be meeting there July 10th. Um, the bishop will be um, actually preaching the service that day. So we'll meet at 10 a.m. and have potluck afterwards. Everyone's welcome to both the service and the potluck. And then there's five Sundays a month, July, so we'll have a joint service on the 31st, and we're doing that at 8.30, and we'll have coffee afterwards. But both of those will be in the row. And then if you look at the bottom of the last page on the inside, we're looking for input about Christmas Eve services. Uh, we had a little discussion about this at uh, our last council meeting. There are some people that had uh, some desire to bring back the traditional late service, some people who really like the 4.30 service, so we like input. Um, I'm on council. I don't know if we have who else we have that's on council. So or talk to Pastor Dave or email somebody or whatever. Let us know what you're thinking. I think that's it. Okay. Just to add on to the fifth Sunday we, service, we have, don't forget, we have noise, let's call it noisy. Oh, noisy offering. Noisy offering. So bring your change and we'll have pans available for that. So. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you all to our service. Uh, happy Father's Day to those that are fathers and father figures and people's lives. Our service begins in the bulletin with uh, confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. <coughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. We take a moment in silence to reflect upon our relationship with God and confess our sins to him. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, knowing and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is Rise, Shine, People, hymn number 665, 665.
service continues in the bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the peace of victory for our God. taken from the 65th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 9. The prophet announces God's impatience. The people's self-absorption is idolatry and images of practices that displease God. Fill this reading. Like a vintner who crushes the grape to release the wine, God will use Israel's exile to establish a new community of the faithful. Beginning at verse 1. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask. To be found by those who did not seek me. I said, Here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh. I am too holy for you. For me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into the servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah inheritors in my mountains. My children shall inherit it. And my servant shall settle there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our song for today is put in the bulletin, Psalm 22. Can you As many of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel was according to Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes. And he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there were, now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to see Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by the demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home, and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Did you know that sometimes in the church there are conflicts? Uh, it's true. Churches are made up of people, and people have the differing opinions about things. For example, there's evidence that Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Church of Galatia because certain members of the congregation were stirring up trouble. Surely you would not think that so early in the church that there was conflict, but there was a disagreement. The issue is that many of the early Christians who had originally been Jews believed that the other believers ought to follow the same path that they did, and they should go under the Jewish rite of circumcision as well as baptism. Since circumcision is not such a particularly appealing ritual, it was causing a great deal of tension in the early church. It reminds me of the story of a priest, a pastor, and a rabbi who would regularly get together for coffee and talking. One day the conversation came about conversions in their faith, bringing people to their church. 
They all agreed that conversions were easy if you had the right approach. The rabbi joked that he could even convert a bear, and that did it. The conversation led to another thing, and they decided that they were going to go into the woods and find a bear, preach to it, and attempt to convert it. A week later, they met at the hospital to discuss the experiences. The priest, with his arm in a sling and on crutches, went first and says, Well, I went into the wood, I went into the woods and found a bear. I found him and I started reading from the Baltimore Catechism. But the bear wanted nothing to do with that. He began slapping me around, so I quickly reached into my pocket and grabbed the holy water that I had. And immediately he became as gentle as a lamb. And it was the pastor's turn. He was in a wheelchair, armed in a cast, and both legs in casts. He said, well, brothers, I went out and found a bear, and I read the Holy Bible to him. But that bear, again, wanted nothing to do with me either. So I wrestled him down to the river and dunked him and baptized his hairy soul. And just like you said, he became as gentle as a lamb. We spent the day praising and glorifying God. They both looked at the rabbi who was laying in the hospital bed in a full body cast with tubes and monitors all around him. The rabbi slowly and painfully shook his head and said, Looking back at it, maybe I should not have started with circumcision. <laughs> The Galatian church was divided over this topic of circumcision. It broke Paul's heart to see the Galatians divided like they were. He knew that us versus them thinking into the, was dangerous to the church. And he was not going to go easy on anyone who tried to, con to make division within the new church. Divisions in the body of Christ. Remember the spiritual background of these Jewish believers before they became Christians. In the time of Paul was writing was actually a dividing wall in the Jewish temple. Which separated the court of the Israelites and the court of the Gentiles. Signs were posted both in Latin and in Greek, warning gentle Gentiles not to go any further into the temple under penalty of death. Those who were advocating circumcision for adult men in Galatia were dividing the churches into those whom they thought were pleasing to God, the circumcised Jewish followers, and those they thought God found unpleasing the uncircumcised Gentiles. This was the mindset they had brought with them from their Jewish backgrounds, and now it was taking a toll on the church. Here Paul was striving with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, to build the churches up, while these so-called Judaizers, through pride, were tearing it apart. Paul knew that could not be allowed to happen. They needed to be reminded of who and whose they were, and even more important, who they followed. They were the body of Jesus Christ whose love brings people together and does not tear them apart. It's like the story Martin Luther once told about two mountain goats who met each other high on a narrow ledge. The ledge was just wide enough for one of the animals to pass. On one side was the steep mountain side, the other a cliff. The two were facing each other and it was impossible for either one of them to turn around or back up. If they had been people, they probably would have started butting heads until they both plunged, plunged to their death. But the goats had more sense than that. One of them laid down on the trail, but the other one literally walked over him. 
both were saved. It takes humility to follow Christ, but humility means accepting one another, knowing one another, loving one another. In our gospel reading today, Jesus asks the name of the demon. He says, the demon responds, legion, for we are many. There is power in a name. In 1999, Scott Ginsburg attended a convention at which all the participants were encouraged to wear name tags. We've all been there. Remember when I first came a year ago, we were all asked to wear name tags so we could get to know each other. But as soon as you left the church, you would rip that name tag off. Well, that day, Scott decided not to rip his name tag off. He thought it might be fun to keep his name tag on and see what happened. He found that people were paying attention to him, called him by name, and introduced themselves because of the name tag. It was kind of fun to see the responses. Scott Ginsburg decided that he would leave the name tag on indefinitely. Something about that name tag seemed to make Scott more approachable. People spoke to him, joked with him, strangers even gave up, came up to him and gave him hugs. Women came up and talked to him. So Scott took this experiment a little bit further. He tattooed his name tag on his chest. This got Scott all kinds of publicity. He is now in Ripley's Believe It or Not records. He's been interviewed numerous times, written books and articles, and he even teaches seminars about being approachable. And it all started with a simple name tag. Hi, my name is Scott. What if Jesus' love was tattooed on our actions, our attitudes, our priorities? What if everything we said, did, or thought flowed solely from the identity as one of Jesus' followers? Wouldn't the world look at us and say, I know who and whose you are. You are a child of God. You are a follower of Jesus. It's tattooed on how you live your life. Of course, where that tattoo belongs is in our hearts. It is so difficult for some people to accept other people, but it is one of the primary tests of a genuine faith. Our true nature of faith. By this, everyone will know that we are that you are my disciples, Jesus said, if you love one another. The message can't be any clearer than that. Being the body of Christ begins with humility and acceptance of others. Being the body of Christ also requires us to look at other people's needs. In short, it means that we develop a generous spirit that makes it easy for us to obey the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I remember one of our first trips to Guatemala. We had a bag, we had bags of gummy bears that we wanted to give to the children, but we weren't sure how to distribute it because we didn't have a bag for each one of the children. We were worried that the children would fight over those bags. After conversation, we decided we'll give the bags to the teacher and let her decide what to do with them. And she did what we thought was unthinkable. She handed the, all the bags to the child closest to her. That small, small girl began carefully handing out the gummy bears one at a time to each of the children until each of them had one. And then she went around the room again and did the same thing. And again. And again until she realized that the next round would not make it all the way through the room. So she asked the teacher for a scissors, and she cut the gummy bears until there was enough for everyone. There was no shoving, no crying, no complaining, no demanding from the children. Each child gratefully received their allotment. They all enjoyed sharing a treat together. It was like they knew what it was 
to follow the golden rule. When we can look past our self-centered biases and see Christ in every believer, then love compels us to freely give of ourselves, of our resources. As a part of the body of Christ, we are called to have the acceptance of one another, to look after one another's needs, and finally be one of Christ's followers means we are to become advocates for one another, for all of God's children. We come together as the body of Christ and go out into the world to share what God has first given us, his love, his forgiveness, his gracious act for all of us, for all of God's children. Continue with the hymn of the day, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, hymn number 843, 843.
You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land and air and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not harm the earth. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. Guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithfully departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place. In Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And the love of you. We'll share a sign of peace with one another. shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our service continues the great thanksgiving on page 152 in the hymnal. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And in great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread, he broke it and gave thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave for all the bread, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is ready. Congregation may be seated, we'll be taking communion in a continuous line at the front of the church. Please stand as you're able.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in this world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many people through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Lord, be gracious to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. In number 772.